I would like to, uh, if you uh, of course agree, like I would like to screen our interview during the event. So there is, uh, let's say like a, this pre-recorded conversation between us, but also I was wondering, uh, because I was watching today uh, a video, um, it's on YouTube, it's I think a foundation or a museum that produced it or hosted your work. Uh, the video is called Protest Forms Memory and Celebration and there is yes. a whole performance and I also wanted to ask if it's a, if you would agree for me to just show maybe one minute of it. Of course, of yeah. course, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. So, so I also give people like a, 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 an idea of what actually you're doing before we talk about it or you talk about it. Sure. Um, and uh, if you don't mind, I would start. I mean, I have several questions to you. Okay. Um, and the uh, first one, and that's also how I got to know your work uh, first, is uh, through this um, uh, uh, idea and the project of the School of Narrative Dance. Sure. Uh, that you founded in, in 2013, if I'm correct. And yes. uh, I wanted to ask you several things about it. And first of all, um, the very notion of school. Yeah. Uh, because it's uh, very present also in dance. Uh, but I would like to ask what is uh, what actually stands behind this uh, concept and what you're doing? What is the school? So I started more or less in 2006 making a big participatory project, but I realized pretty soon that participants need like a sort of umbrella under which work and feel a sense of belonging. And uh, a part of that, on the other side, I was uh, as professor myself questioning a lot the system of education, especially the vertical system of the education, most hierarchic in a, certain, in a certain way. And I will, was very focused at that time on horizontal system of education, how difficult this could be to reach out, but also how interesting and more contemporary it was very significant for me to, uh, to read uh, Jacques Rancière, the ignorant master, for instance, and a lot of uh, sociologists and philosophers were very inspiring. So I tried in, with the school to create a sort of mix between these two idea, uh, ideas. On one hand, the sense of belonging and the lack of sense of belonging that people may need because this was the feedback I received for so many years so create something that can be like a container and on the other hand uh, questioning my position as, as teacher and also the system of education that I found at that time and still I found right now uh, not very much based on the self-cultivation on the um, the horizontally uh, sharing of skills and the equality uh, and so that's how it started everything mm. uh, because what uh, what I find uh, and particularly interesting um, is also that from what I saw uh, most in the on the videos is that there is certain also plurality and in terms of you bring a lot of different uh, techniques and I would also say different levels of um, what to call it professionalism or expertise because uh, from what I saw there are people in different age and, and let's say maybe with a different relation to dance or music um, so um, I would like to also ask how how does it come together how is it put together uh, and is there any process of selection in terms of what languages and techniques you invite to co uh, to constitute a school? Okay, so the School of Narrative Dance is based on a few uh, focus that are always the same wherever we go, which are the empowerment, the emancipation of participants, the um, equality, the sustainability, and an ecology of assembly so all these concepts are at the very basis of the project uh, but 
uh, in every place we work, because we work in situ, we find different local energies, different sites, and different people, of course, they want to participate. Even within the same community, there are a lot of different communities and groups. And of course, I like to mention also individuals or people that don't feel in any uh, real group or association, in any gathering. This is also very important for us to reach. So, um, the base is always the same and it's very clear. This is a, a place for failure as well, uh, which means that a lot of people can join, and this is my goal, without feeling the pressure to, oh my God, what will be the outcome? But living a real creative process in a choral system, not uh, in, alone in their own space. Mm -hmm. And that's also the reason why very often, almost every, uh, almost always, the School of Merit Dance Final Restitution is a performance in the street. Uh, because it's very, very much connected with the environment where uh, our participants live in. And also a new reading or even a rewriting of such a space. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, I, I strongly believe that a creative process can be a place mentally and physically where you can really experiment yourself and can really read the script the idea of what is a failure and what is a success that's also why no professional people feel extremely comfortable and that's maybe also one of the reason we have very big number all the time because um amateur or um, person that never never used the body uh, ever in their life for communicate or even with very big uh, block in sense of communication even verbal communication can be at the same side of a professional dancer and they both will have a completely different experience also for the professional people the school of narrative dance it's pretty challenging and it's also something extremely new because you don't have the, your comfort zone and you have to share and you can also achieve things that you may not, ex not expect it in a more professional environment, just devoted to your discipline. Plus, there are a lot of people with the mental and physical disabilities, and uh, uh, also people that come from for, that come from foreign countries, uh, refugees, immigrants, asylum seekers. Uh, very old, very, very young people. So all this landscape portrays a community, portrays uh, our uh, contemporary cities. And so everybody can find his or her place. This is my role, one of my roles, one of my main roles is to guarantee for the dignity of the people and for the fact that they can find their space according also with their time because this is also a part of that people have families people have children have work uh, or un unemployed and this can also be very discriminant in a society so they can feel really losers because work is not only to have it means also to be um, I say all this because at the very center of the selection process there is no, no censorship so everybody uh, re responding to the open call or to direct letter of invitation in the case of association or groups can join the school of narrative dance. The only uh, uh, boundary is the leg, the, the, the law. So if you want to make something illegal, obviously you cannot do that. So you cannot talk about pedophile or stuff like that, and you cannot propose Nazi or fascist uh, uh, content. Uh, but everything is regulated by the law and under the law people and citizens are ev every day no so this is the only factor of course this means that you have a lot of flexibility because at the very end you don't know who will join the project and how to create this flexible space for emancipation for everybody but this is my role mm -hmm. and i was thinking with uh, with this what you say, I mean, to me, like uh, watching it is also very present, this uh, a question of society or of possible society that you describe and all of those um, 
also issues like what would be the, let's say, the minimal protocol or the minimum condition for participation also. And because you talk about a lot of groups or, or people, individuals also that are possibly excluded from certain types of expression. Uh, and what I find interesting and, and um, very uh, meaningful is also the, in a way, publicity of, of this event. So that uh, from what I've seen, uh, that often the dance is not only this kind of social uh, undertaking that you described, but it's also becoming a public event and it occupies a public space. And I would like to ask a bit about that. What is the, what, how would you describe the dynamic of how would you see the role of this specific also manifestation of human expression? Uh, what, what it does to public space and, and what kind of maybe potential it has when the dance occurs? Uh, I could respond to this, I could answer telling that for me a body is always politic body. Even when you don't mention any political uh, factors or you don't intend to make any political statement. But the fact that the body occupies a space which is public, in a certain way, it's about emancipation and empowerment, as I said before. But it's also a very important gesture, something that is almost uh, uh, forbidden in certain situation. So for the participants of the school, it's extremely important to have shared this time together, but it's equally important to have a final restitution, which could be a sort of catharsis, all the adrenaline, all the uh, expectation, wishes, fears, can have a sort of uh, um, final resolution. And it's extremely important to make it outside in the street and in front of other people that possibly can make uh, their neighbors because it's a way to rewrite their own life and the perception that other people have about them, but also leave their own uh, streets and places in a completely different way. Very often I um, collect this kind of participant, as you mentioned. So people sometimes feel excluded by certain uh, level of the society uh, organization, because at the end, it's, a, it's an organi or organization that fails in a lot of senses. But not only, we don't have not only this kind of participants. And until the very end, I cannot predict who will join the project. But what is very common, Almost everywhere I went, and I worked so far with over six millions of people in more or less 17 or 18 countries, is this lack of sense of community and this huge need to feel that you belong to something, and also the way that you go out and you show this something. Um, temporary communities can be uh, created in the temporary project that you make. And because this is a safe place where, yes, you can go out of your comfort zone, but you can also experiment yourself without the pressure of the other environment. This means that, and this is the result that I don't control, but I experience that, that people remain together. Maybe not all of them, but the people that join the project form still uh, small nucleus, small groups, and they develop ideas, maybe not connected at all with art, but at least they knew each other, and they knew each other maybe in a different way, because especially in small cities and villages where I also work, people seem to know each other, but at the end, they can rethink also about the idea they have on this or that person. And so this new discovery, it's something that is extremely political in my opinion, because can shape and change the ordinary status quo. And actually it does, but this, this is not me. Uh, it's just the, the excuse of the art and the creative process, but at the, very, at the very end, this is the energy of people. And maybe it's the response of their needs as well. Mm. Yeah. And um, also, um, I would like to um, go back a bit to dance in itself, yes. because you, the name uh, of the school also contains uh, this. 
and you, you said already about this um, uh, if if I may also like uh, uh, build on something you said that like there's something also I believe personally in dance that the very dispositive of dancing or the body is the social also the the ability to to be in relation and somehow a foundational principle also for the body uh, this kind of connectedness and and how dance also um, I I believe. Uh, helps us to recover this sort of knowledge and ability in, in many different places. But I wanted to ask about, um, because uh, this piece that I mentioned earlier, Protest Forms, Memory and Celebration, has a very particular focus. And there are certain forms that I would uh, dare associate with also certain, um, you know, communist, uh, uh, like also like language of gymnastics, for example, you know, or, Yes. of a certain composition of bodies in the space and i wanted to ask a bit about the content or the material for dance how uh, how do you work with that what is actually the material what what do you uh, revive or reconstruct or what do you take on on as as material to work in dance okay I'm personally interested in every manifestation of body movements and uh, equally its political meaning but also the social and potentiality within the use of the body in a lot of forms from sport, gymnast to uh, creative uh, ideas, uh, theater movement, dance in every aspect. So this is for sure the base and this is personally a big interest. But there is a peculiarity within the skill of narrative dance. Every time we approach a different city and we work on location, we, of course, I have several choreographers helping me, but they are more executive than anything, which means that they are not pre-existing choreographies before we meet participants. And we start uh, thinking about possible choreography, basing our ideas deeply in the vernacular movement of the people, the way they use gesture and their own body. Also, the difficult, how difficult it is to use your body uh, if you never had a connection with. And the voice and body, in my opinion, are the most ter terrifying and scary uh, things for people, but also as the voice that resonates in the ear and in the ear and in the ear and movements can really have this social aspect that you mentioned. I strongly believe that, I experience uh, myself. Then we try also to understand when we go to different city to understand what is already there. If there is already an interest about dance and if so, what? So I worked in places where schools of dance were everything and mean everything for people, uh, a sort of emancipation or being part of something or even just the dream of their life. Other places where the, the body was interesting just from the lens of the sport. And it was also interesting for us to understand that. In other places, we realized that a lot of fastest signs and way to intend the gymnasts were extremely strong nowadays. For instance, in China, it was pretty clear that their way to conceive gymnastics was extremely um, uh, um, depending on the government, the power, and this idea of people making the same things in a certain way, etc. I also uh, discuss a lot about classical dance, which for me it's a very important, of course, but it's also a very exclusive kind of dance. And then I mix this very often with the parkour, which caught my interest more and more in the last years, because it's a new way to uh, the free running and the, um, it's uh, an idea of body appropriation of the city, reading the city, uh, um, um, talk about uh, resistance through the body, which is extremely inspiring. 
And actually I found out that there are a lot of people doing a parkour that are silently connected with other parkour groups all around the world. It's incredible. In South Africa, they were connected with the British. The British were connected with the Italian uh, ones. So now I, I will work in Vancouver and from South Africa, they know people in Vancouver making parkour. So it's, it resonates to me as something extremely interesting on political level. And uh, because the resistance is one of the main point in my opinion right now in our history and the way to rethink about also our uh, the way we stay in, in in this world i found that parkour it's an incredibly incredibly uh, way to read um, things again but also cramp for instance in uh, in uh, LA no in the African American districts or um, Pansula in Africa uh, in South Africa mostly but uh, Mascandi so all these traditional dances that are extremely important for people and are connected uh, with post-colonial uh, period and they are so alive and so important for them because it's their emancipation. They're, it's into their culture, but it's into a, a, their everyday life. So yeah, when I, I recollect and I resume all this experience and the incredible uh, vision that I had, I can say that the body is political and the dance is maybe the, manifestation of this uh, social sense and value of of the the people on the other hand i also think that you don't have necessarily to be a professional dancers in order to dance and to uh, to feel uh, that there are different way to tell about yourself to tell about your community to uh, respond to instance from the society or to to express your struggle or also your tension and your frustration. Um, that's why I don't have any problem to have a, uh, people that also discuss about contact, dance, classic dance, this traditional, this other folk. So it's just, um, it's about also uh, our representation of our bodies. For instance, when I go to Africa or to uh, um, Northern America, I always meet uh, black people uh, complaining about the classical dance, the ballet, as a way that exclude uh, their bodies. And of course, it excluded. It, it, it's 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 true, but this is also something very important to be addressed and to be shown. That's why also ballet is always present. Um, yeah, I think that this is very meaningful for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the voice, again, I insist on the voice because for me it's very similar. And the body are two things that are silenced very very easily from the regime from the dictatorship, but also from the indifference of the daily life. Mm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking it, is, it sounds to me that it's also like an interesting way to really like um, um, see the school as something because you also talk a lot about like a certain pools of knowledge that are already there in place or practice yeah. that the school does not come to really like um, frame or systematize the knowledge or archive the knowledge but it's actually creating a possibility for certain things to um, be interwoven or maybe exist together or communicate with each other which I find very interesting as approach to, uh, to, to the phenomena of dance in general that is possibly in every part of the world practice yes. or other way and my last question I was thinking like because there is something that I would uh, perceive um, as as a certain, let's say, a task of um, of education or, or education and dance is to really awaken the body into participation and expression. But I would like to kind of reverse it and and, and ask um, how would you um, 
how do you see in relation to to your work or and school uh, how can it possibly or how does it affect the public life or our idea also for uh, including people that maybe watch or are let's say non-dancing participants like how does it affect our sense of assembly that you mentioned before and, and our um, the importance of our bodies occupying spaces in public it's exactly about that about assembly so this concept of gathering people is very uh, urgent because gathering people means sometimes resistance, means sometimes uh, dictatorship, means sometimes to protest against something or means sometimes to accept something. So there are a lot of sides in this gathering and they cannot be unperceived. Um, but the only thing that really exists in the space and the time is your body and your presence there. And if you think that for instance, a street of the city belong to you and you are part of that because you are occupying this space. Really, my participants don't care at all at the end if they don't make the step, the, the choreographic step in the proper way, or they even suggest or even explore based on the notion and the insight that choreographers can give them, they go, they go farther. And this is exactly the same in the education, at least in the system of horizontal education that I was mentioning and that, in my opinion, is extremely interesting. As Jacques Rancé said in a very simple, simple uh, metaphor, when uh, you talk with your... Uh, um, uh, when you listen to uh, your professor, your master, and uh, he or her are providing notions and things, these are just opportunities for you to go further and make your self-education and go, and go further of their limitation uh, because the professor has limits. Also the choreographer has limits, at least in this environment which is not the theatrical one, not the professional one, so we can allow this kind of, uh, every kind of uh, initiative so very often we have, for instance, uh, groups of Tai Chi, Pilates, uh, yoga, and meditation. They changed completely the choreography wherever we went, and they changed shaping the choreography and the insight proceeding from the choreographers, including movement and also uh, occupation of space that they experience already in their own practice. This is great for me. This doesn't mean they're not dancing, but they are just developing and making even better, they are up upgrade actually the experience for everybody. They are telling about themselves, they are telling to the others, not only to the artists or the choreographers about themselves, and they are just improving what we do. It's exactly the same with the vernacular gesture of people you may notice that here in Italy we gesture a lot and we move a lot the hands. This is a stereotype, but it's true. In the south of, of the world, in the southern, you see more people moving more hands or try to accompany your verbal language and verbal communication with the gesture. All this is a super big legacy for us, but also the body that is standing is more static or the body of people I can I can really tell a lot about workers or former workers or unemployed people. It changes a lot the vocabulary of their movement. And this is something that is included in the dance. And uh, if it's not highlighted by the same participant for from uh, an individual initiative, we try to understand that. We try to observe that because this is extremely important also to make a sort of ecology of uh, the representation. And, and yes, when then these kind of people feel that they can make this in front of others, but on the streets where they walk every day and they don't experience as their streets, because even if you live in a city, it happens to myself as well, uh, 
uh, that sometimes I feel I don't belong to this place. Even I lived here since years. Um, uh, if you are a foreigner, even more. And if you are obliged to live somewhere, even more. It's so important for people to understand the space. And I always learn from them this because I never really uh, thought about uh, the lack of space, uh, the constriction of the body. Um, I come from a bourgeois people uh, family from one part of my or of my parents, and uh, the other uh, par the other part of the family is uh, completely different. Not very poor people, and the vocabulary of gesture and the constriction are opposite, but still there are. So in a bourgeois environment, you feel that you have to stay in a certain way, you have to stand in a certain way, uh, your energy uh, and where the center of your energy is can modify completely your posture and your way to walk, even just to, to, to stay in front of another person. All these things are narrative, all these things are narration. And um, even we can narrate things which are more into the uh, label, uh, labeled as a story or something like that. At the very end, this is the narration. This is why the school of narrative dance is named this way, because this is the, uh, this is unpredictable, but this is extremely, extremely important um, and tells a lot about people. And what we want is to tell people about people. Mm.